In chapter 20, we're going to switch gears and we're going to start talking about um, nuclear chemistry. So in all the previous chapters, we've been focusing on the electrons um, of an atom. Basically, uh, chemical bonding, reactivity, kinetics, equilibrium, um, periodic trends, uh, Lewis structures, all that stuff. Um, basically, everything from chapter 3, 4, 5 is kind of different, uh, 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, and then on into equilibrium and uh, acids and bases and all that stuff. That has all been related to the electrons. Um, and those are the electrons that are flying around outside of the nucleus of the atom. And we've been essentially just ignoring the nucleus. The only thing we've really been concerned about when it comes to the nucleus has just been the atomic number, which has been telling us the number of electrons. So now we're going to switch gears and we're actually going to... Um, forget about those outermost electrons or forget about the electrons altogether and just look at in at the nucleus and think about what can happen with a nucleus. So in chapter 20, um, it's broken into three parts. And the first part is radioactivity and radiation. So we're going to talk about radioactivity, which is the emission of particles or photons from the nucleus. Um, and then we're going to talk about things um, that can come out of the nucleus. So what are the subatom what are the subatomic particles and what are the types of radioactive decay that can happen. Then we're going to talk about nuclear stability, and we're going to look at how can we figure out what type of decay mode um, an atom will want to proceed by, depending on its uh, atomic number and its number of neutrons. Okay, and then so then we have the rate of then the next part is going to be the rate of radioactive decay, which now that we know how the atoms are decaying, we're going to want to look at how quickly do they decay. Um, and it's going to turn out that this is going to be a bit of a review of chapter 13. Um, radioactive decay follows a first order process. So we're going to look back at how we use the integrated rate equation for uh, a first order process and also the half-life. And then this is going to allow you to do uh, calculations with carbon dating and radioisotope dating. And then the last part, which is, um, believe it or not, is the shortest part of this chapter, but is probably from a practical perspective the most important part is energy and nuclear reactions. Um, so we're going to learn, we're going to go back and we're going to review the Einstein relation all the way back from chapter 7, which says that there's a relationship between mass and energy. And when we convert mass in energy in these nuclear reactions, when we convert mass to energy in these nuclear reactions, um, we can get a tremendous amount of energy from it. Uh, and this is actually what drives things like nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons. So um, from a practical perspective, although we're not going to spend that much time on it, that is probably the most significant part of nuclear chemistry in, in history. So the, the next thing we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be looking at nuclear chemistry and radioactivity um, and how things decay. So radioactivity is defined as the spontaneous emission of particles or photons from the nucleus. Uh, so what we're talking about are the, what we're talking about is the nucleus is basically to try trying to stabilize itself because it either has too many protons or too many neutrons or just too many protons and neutrons combined to stabilize itself it's going to um, emit um, particles that come from these uh, neutrons and electrons um, or it's going to emit photons to get itself into a lower energy state and that is what radioactivity is. So in the first part of this video, we're just going to take a look at um, doing like a little mini review from chapter one. Then in the next video, we're going to look at the different type of subatomic particles we have and what types of uh, nuclear decay modes there are. And then from there, the, the video after that, we're going to talk about nuclear stability and then how we can predict what type of um, decay there will be. So let's do a simple one first for our little mini review. Uh, let's take 12 over 6 carbon. So what you have to remember is that this number up here is the mass number. And this number down here is the atomic number. So the way that we can start to dissect this, if we wanted to get the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons, uh, the number of protons in this case is going to be equal to the atomic number which in this case is equal to 6. And then the way that we get the, the uh, number of electrons is by looking at the charge. So in this case, there's no charge indicated in this atom. So when that's the case, that means that the protons are going to equal the electrons, so we're going to have 6 electrons. 
Now the neutrons we have to use uh, is going to equal the mass number minus the atomic number, which is going to give us the number of neutrons. Remember, the mass number is the combination of protons and neutrons that make up the nucleus. Those are the things that have mass. So in this case, we're going to take 12 minus 6 is going to give us 6 neutrons. And what you're going to notice is that for light atoms, um, these tend to have similar numbers of protons and neutrons, if not exactly the same. So it's not surprising that we have 6 and 6 uh, protons and neutrons here. Now let's look at a heavier atom like U-235, um, which is one of the atoms that is commonly used in um, things like nuclear fusion, and, nuclear fission, and um, for nuclear reactors. So with U-235, um, we can start to work this out. Our proton number is going to be uh, 92, which is our atomic number. And then if we put a positive sign here so that we can do this, the number of electrons is going to equal basically the charge um, is going to, you're going to have to look at the charge and the number of protons. So if we have a positive charge, that means that we have one more uh, positive charge than we have negative charges. So that means that we're going to have 91 electrons, which is going to give us a grand total of 92 pluses minus 91 negatives is going to give us a plus one. And then the neutrons in this case is going to equal 235 minus 92 which is going to equal uh, a grand total of 143. So this is actually quite interesting. So you'll notice that with light elements, we have a um, n to z ratio that's very close to 1. But then in heavier elements, we notice that the n to z ratio is much, much larger than 1. Now, we're going to talk about this in the nuclear stability part video, but what you can start to imagine is that as you start to put more and more positive charges in the nucleus, meaning more and more protons, those things are going to want to repel. So what holds this whole thing together? It turns out that the neutrons act as a glue to hold the nucleus together. This is what we call the strong nuclear force. So we're going to cover that, and that's why down at low atomic numbers where there's relatively few protons, you don't need that many neutrons to hold it together. But then as we get to very, very high numbers of protons, you start to see that the number of neutrons goes up significantly. So in the next video, we're going to look at the types of particles we have and at um, how these particles can decay.